Well, hello there, guys. Uh, it's been a while. Hi. How are you guys doing? So for this uh, little Empress Talks, I had a bunch of ideas to record stuff and whatnot, but a lot of stuff has happened. I am a little overwhelmed, and I just wanted to check in on you guys and the collective. So this is basically, how are you guys doing? <laughs> I am hanging by a thread, um, and it's okay. I'm, uh, I'm sure that you guys are too. It has been very hectic. I mean, I haven't been keeping up with the astro transits, but it's been painful. And with the, with the eclipses, and uh, I had, I believe, uh, the, we had the new moon in Taurus. Excuse you, Nanako. My dog sneezing. She's like, hey, hey, hey. new moon in, in mm, Scorpio. And then we had the full moon in Taurus. Oh, 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 my heart. <laughs> so anyway, I am just going to go straight to it. I don't really have much. I have much to say, but not at all at the same time. Does that ever happen to you guys? <laughs> I, um... I always have a lot to say, but sometimes it's just not the right moment. So for now, I just have my deck of cards here and I am going to pull out cards and we're going, we're going to, we're going to go by that, right? So let's see how the collective is doing. I would have recorded a video, but I don't, I don't feel like it. <laughs> I'm just going to do, oh my God. <laughs> my bottle is like <laughs> I have my little table and it's it's wobbly and it's like my water bottle is hitting my dresser bang 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 I'm like oh great that's fantastic all right <laughs> all right I'm so I'm gonna shuffle the cards and see what comes out I'm doing this as just a way of like if there's anything that you guys have had on your mind or you guys want some confirmation I don't know. Whatever comes out on the cards, we we don't know. Uh, so let's go. Let's see what comes out. Oh, okay. Something coming in quick with the Eight of Wands. Uh, and we have, wow. Okay, we have the Six of Cups and the Star. Oh, okay. Let's start off with that. So this could be... Um, <clears throat> A particular message for some of you. So the Eight of Wands is a card of swiftness, something happening quickly. Interesting because there is a nostalgia factor to the Six of Cups. Now with the, the fire of the fire, the fire of the Eight of Wands, there is this the speediness to it. Like I remember there was one, uh, um, there was a tarot book that I have. I believe it's one of my favorites. Um, I believe it's, uh, what's the name of it? Oh me. What's the name of it? Uh, oh, Tarot for Yourself by Mary Kay Greer. I recommended that book in another, an earlier audio. Can you tell that I'm just kind of like, oh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> so, uh, with the Eight of Wands uh, in the description uh, in that book, they were talking about how the Eight of Wands is like Cupid's arrows. So for some of you, there might be something coming in quick in regards to love. And then we have here with the Six of Cups, this could be a situation that just makes you feel at home, makes you feel nostalgic. And with uh, it, I just love the Six of Cups. It's it always makes me a little sad when I look at it because I think of the past and memories and that's a bit triggering for some. <laughs> me? <laughs> but there is, a, uh, there is this beauty to it where someone is offering you something and this could be a person from the past or someone new and it's just kind of like, okay, what are you going to focus on? Are you going to focus on the past? Are you going to focus on the future? Or are you going to stay in the present? And this is, um, I feel like that present is the... It is what connects the past and the future. It's what it's something that's going to ground you. So this cup that is being offered to you in the present 
is what's going to help ground you for the future decisions, for the decisions that you are planning for the days to come. So something quickly, uh, an offering from like in something that could bring upon memories, a, a sweet memory, childhood memories from the past. And we have here as the third card, the star, which is a beautiful card of like... When you look at the star card in, in tarot, there is this hope. There is this, um, it's something shines bright and something is shining the way in regards to something that you didn't expect. Because with the eight of wands, it's like, whoa, what's happening? I didn't expect this to happen. And it's just kind of like opening your heart in a way that you one probably were like or are like no this is intrusive I don't want this I don't want to open up my heart like this I don't want to get hurt so it's like with the star card normally depicted as a, a naked figure like in as the water bearer also the star card ruled by Aquarius and it's this vulnerability of just being yourself and showing yourself and just <laughs> I'm here this is me and take it or leave it kind of energy, right? So this is a beautiful energy, guys, because it's trusting what's coming your way and just being yourself and not having to hide anything anymore, despite the pain from the past, despite anything that has held you back because of it. And that's funny with the Eight of Wands because it's like, ah, why did this happen so quickly? I, I don't know what to do with this information. And that's just kind of like the Eight of Wands. It's like, <laughs> okay, woo. <laughs> anyway, let's get some more cards. Let's see. So that could be for some of you. Let's see if there's a continuation to this. Let's go. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Okay, so we have also the nine of pentacles and the three of wands. So this could be another message for some, or it could be a continuing message. I feel it's a separate message. Some of you are trying to manifest more abundance or just trying to be in your own power and just be your amazing self and like whether it be in your own business be your you know running your own company just being you just being your awesome fabulous self just uh owning your power potential and knowing your worth that is the nine of pentacles the nine of pentacles we see this energy of I have all this beautiful abundance around me because I've worked hard for it. And now I get to enjoy the fruits of my labor. So there's that. And then we have the three of wands, which shows that there is more to it to stay focused, despite anything that might have come your way that has brought you maybe a sense of hmm, disappointment, because it's interesting when I look at the, the three of wands, the individual is just like staring out into the distance and um excuse me i was like oh no i need to burp burp away from the mic the mic burp away from the mic ah, okay <laughs> um <laughs> so it's like staring out into the distance and just like man what am i looking at <laughs> <laughs> where wh what am I doing I'm just standing here just looking out in the distance you know trying to focus on something but what is it that I'm truly trying to focus on because some of us just feel lost I mean relatable I feel absolutely lost oof but it is about connecting the dots understanding that as long as you stay focused on something there is drive, there is motivation, there is something guiding you to the next step, the next part of the journey. And with the star card, I know that that's like prior, like, I just, I feel it all connects anyway. But I feel that there is something to be grateful and excited about. The Ace of Swords. We have this new, this clarity. That's awesome okay so three of wands with the ace of swords is focus and clarity i know what i want 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 i don't know why i felt like saying it over and over and i'm gonna take this sword and direct it to this new path 
staying focused and truly embracing this new way of thinking. There you go. I was like, okay, what, what, what am I trying to channel? What's the message that's trying to come in? <laughs> and with the Ace of Swords is just when you least expect it, there's just going to be this moment of clarity swooping in like, oh, <laughs> and being like, oh, that, oh, oh, can you hear her? My doggo. She's just like, whimpering on my baby girl my my little girl um oh and there are options there's seven of cups here the seven of cups is an interesting card here okay guys because in the Rider Waite tarot which is my favorite I have many favorite decks don't get me started but the Rider Waite is just I can always go back to it and the symbolism is so clear and it just reminds me of when I got my first tarot deck, my Rider Waite. Um, at age 14, 15, I don't remember. I know it was during a, um, an, a I, it was my, damn, <laughs> I, it was for, it was a, we went to a Renaissance festival. It was a field trip for my Italian class and I got my first deck there. It was cool. I might have mentioned this already, but whatever. <laughs> it was cool. You know what else was cool, guys? I don't know if I've told you. Um, it's just a nice memory. So um, one of the first times I read for like a lot of people was, I believe, in my junior year of, I almost said college now, uh, my junior year of high school. And I was going to read for a friend. It was right before my Italian class. And... Um, <laughs> It was, I believe it was my friend Andrew. He was like, oh, hey, Lucy, can you like read my cards before class? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, I, I had the deck already because I had gone to the, um, the Renaissance Festival uh, and got my first deck. And I was like all excited. I was like, OK, sure, I'll read for you. Sure, let's go. And uh, then my teacher, oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> I remember his name. Um, but yeah, my, my, my Italian teacher um, comes in and he would always call me Lucia because my my first name is actually uh, <laughs> I'm tongue tied. It's Lucia. Um, but everyone just calls me Lucy. So and uh, <laughs> the teacher sees me like pulling out my cards and re like going to read for my friend. And the teacher was like. Lucia and I'm like ah. I'm like I look at the time and I'm like I know I'm not like you know the class hasn't started I'm okay I'm not in trouble am I and then my teacher is just like you're going to read for the renaissance festival at at this at the school and I'm just like I've never read for a bunch of people <laughs> and uh my teacher is like well, you've been assigned, oh, you know, you're going to read for them. Like, okay, good day. <laughs> and I'm like, bah, 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 bah. let me tell you guys that that was just one of the best experiences. It was overwhelming because I've been reading for people for so long that it is, I, mm, being very sensitive to people's emotions and stuff like that. I just pick up, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fucking sponge. <laughs> I just like, <laughs> and and it's just I just know what I just know what I have to. I don't know. I just I just know. You know what? I just know. I have no logical explanation. I just know what I have to say to to calm the the, the person down and 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 whatever pick up energetically and and so there that that is and. Uh, it was at that moment I knew <laughs> that this was something that I was meant to do for the rest of my life, even though growing up, uh, going to a Catholic private school, it was just like, these are not things that you do, not in a Catholic school of, of sorts. So that was not something that it, it's taboo. And it was still taboo afterward. I, I, and, um, I was the only one in my family. I was always... Um, kind of isolated because I always had my own ideals and deep in my heart I always wanted acceptance but I always wanted to go my own way and do my own things and, and when it came to my interests and so I was very eccentric in my interests and one of those things was tarot 
Um, and I became the go-to friend to get readings from and so forth. And I remember it was exciting, but at the same time, I never, I never knew how it drained me so much. I remember one time in college, <laughs> I, why am I like this? I gave so many free readings. It was, um, I believe it was for a club that I was part of. And then, uh, I mentioned that, um, excuse me, that I, I read tarot and oof, okay. Why, why did I do that? I read like for over 20 something people all in one go. And it was emotional. People were crying as I was reading for them. It was just like so much. And I'm like, how did I do this? Why did I do this to myself? I did not know what I was getting myself into. <laughs> and, uh, but if I can bring a bit of peace and, or clarity to a person as I do readings, it just really, it means the world to me. I did my job, uh, well, whatever that job is at this point. Uh, I just felt that I did the right thing and it was worth it. Um, was it exhausting afterward? Yes. <laughs> but it was just, I don't regret it. And I'm still learn. I'm on that learning journey and look, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, yeah. So back to the seven of cups, right? <laughs> I don't know. I just, uh, decided to share that with you guys. And so with the seven of cups, we have lots of choices and it could mean indecision. It could, uh, mean that there are very many options and there is a choice to be made or you want to have your cake and eat it too and have all the cups. So it's on you to decide what you just what you want to do. But I feel in this case with the cards I pulled that it's important to stick. So right now guys, if there is some there's a lot of choices in your life that you want to do many many things and you're a little bit lost and you're like, "Oh man, what direction do I go?" whether it be having a lot of dating options or having a lot of uh choices um uh, hmm. whether it be for work or uh, other job opportunities or uh, whatever it may be. Uh, I'm hearing and, I, and I, I feel it that right now the Three of Wands is telling you or telling the collective to stay focused on that one thing that's going to bring you clarity in the long run. That's what this Ace of Swords is about, that there might be a lot of shiny, pretty things to distract you, but there is only the one thing and that one thing is what's going to help you move forward with utmost clarity, my beautiful fam. All right. So that is for that. All right. I'm going to pull out a couple more cards. Okay. I'm going to shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And, uh, and I'll leave it at that. It's just a short little, little audio that I decided to share with you guys because I felt like popping in. I feel bad that I haven't really been updating my channel. I've been going through a lot. And I've just been feeling very exhausted. I'm still catching up with orders from, um, oh my gosh, when I found out, mind you, it wasn't a bad, like it was a category one <laughs> hurricane. Um, what's her name? <laughs> what's the name? It was Nicole or something, but thankfully like my area, we got a lot of rain, but a lot of heavy rain, <laughs> but, uh, it wasn't too, it wasn't too bad. We didn't lose power or anything. I was like, oh, God bless. <laughs> I was like, I got to work on my stuff. I like my, the people uh, that I, uh, yeah, I'm still catching up on orders are going to be like another hurricane. I'm like, I don't make the rules, man. This just happened. <laughs> I'm not telling these hurricanes to come my way and, you know, do shit. <laughs> um, I hate her Casey's. I hate Florida. Ah, <laughs> anyway. So let's pull some more cards. But yes, I am okay. It wasn't a big deal. I mean, there was a lot of rain, uh, at least in my area, but we good. We good. All right, let's go. Uh, let's pull some final cards for the collective. Let's see what final bits of advice. Ooh, okay. We got the 10 of wands. Uh, okay. We got the 10 of wands. We got the chariot. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Let's go. We got the two of pentacles, choices to make, and judgment. Ooh, baby. Like one more. Oof. Page of, uh, I almost said page of cups. <laughs> page of, oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, 
page of wands and uh, king of swords. Let's go, baby. Let's go. All right. So we got here first off with the ten of wands. Oh, gosh, fam. I mean, I feel this. This is basically the, the heavy burden card. Like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulder, your shoulder, excuse me. And it's interesting because with the chariot card next to it, it's the driving force to keep going. It's like, okay, listen, I know you're you're, you're tired. <laughs> you're going through it, but I need you to release what doesn't service you right now. So you lighten your load, get in the car. We got <laughs> we got a trip to make. <laughs> we got a trip to make because the with the two of pentacles, it's a decision that you're weighing your options. Oh. Oh, gosh, Nanako, are you okay, babe? <laughs> Nanako is just like, boo-boo, <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Ooh. Anyway, um, okay, so with the Two of Pentacles, it's this, like, energy of, okay, you know, uh, should I stay or should I go? <laughs> I don't know. Or, like, uh, what, you know, you're weighing your options or you're trying to balance life. You're juggling a lot of, I have a lot of decks that show like the two of pentacles as juggling, you know, juggling situations. And it's interesting. I love the symbolism. Um, when you look at the Rider Waite two of pentacles, we have the, um, the, the, what's this called? What's this called me? But like what's holding the two, two of pentacles it, within the it's the infinity symbol there's a lot of infinity symbols in um <clears throat> in the in the deck there's a lot of that but yeah it's just you're infinitely balancing your life out oh that's great <laughs> that's fantastic and then we have judgment which boy oh my god oof judgment card oh nanako are you okay she is like she has me anxious my girl. Okay, no, don't do that. No, I took you out already. <laughs> okay. With the judgment card, we have... I'm so sorry. I'm so out of... Like, I'm everywhere, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> With the judgment card, we have... Um, ooh, we're hearing the call of our higher selves or we're hearing the call of something. We're going to be receiving a call like, hey... This is, you know, you got the job or, hey, um, I want you to move in with me or like this, just you're hearing this higher calling, this call or something you've been waiting on, something that you were not expecting um, out of the blue. That's what I'm picking up. And with judgment, it's a kind of a renewal of sorts, like the Phoenix rising. Um, excuse me. <laughs> it's. There is a quote, and I'm trying to remember it, but for the life of me, it's not coming to my brain right now. It's not coming to mind. But it's um, hearing the call of the trumpet and listening to what's, um, what's your truth. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to sacrifice? What are you... So, mm, okay. So we have the fool's journey, right? We start off with the fool, and we go from magician, high priestess, um, empress, emperor, hierophant, so forth. We have all of this just like going in and really shaking us up on our journey. Once we reach judgment, we're battered and bruised, bro. We're going through this like <laughs> this whole freaking situation where are we even like, are we ready for the next part of the journey? Are we ready to, to, to take another leap of faith because the journey is coming to an end and you can feel it. You've done everything in your power for this chapter. Okay. Because right before judgment, we have the sun and before that is uh, the moon. So it's all this basically building up to a resurrection of self. Okay. You're rising from the dead, uh, so to speak. <laughs> and this is that moment where you realize this I leave behind, this I take with me to the next chapter. Okay, so there is something that you are leaving behind and I see it clearly with the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is this burden, this heaviness 
Cherry is like, you got to keep moving forward, but you can't take everything with you. You have to leave some stuff behind. You can't take this baggage with you. You've been holding on to this for so long. You got to let go, you know? And then it's interesting because then with the two of pentacles, it's like, okay, so I got to balance these things out. What do I let go of, right? And then we have the two court cards. We have... um. <laughs> Nope, I'm not going to reference what I, I, I remembered from one of the many books I've read about the way the Page of Wands admires the wand. <laughs> I mean, I know that wands are in tarot also referenced as phallic objects and blah, 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 blah. But that is not for this audio. <laughs> Anyway, so we're going to move on. But the interest of the Page of Wands, like, wow, this is, be this is, ow, <laughs> I, I hurt myself. <laughs> ah, um, this is amazing. I can't believe that this new thing, this shiny new thing or this, this wand is so cool so interesting i want to know more about it i want to learn and implement these lessons right i don't know i'm just like but yes the page of wands admires the wand the the the, the passion the heat the inspiration that comes from this creativity and it's being channeled down into this um this thing uh, th that they're admiring this person this uh new opportunity whatever it may be and with the the king of swords now, remember, we pulled the Ace of Swords earlier. So with the Ace of Swords, we are going on this. It's like the King of Swords is like, I got the sword. I got the clarity. I know. I know what I got to do. I got to stay in my, you know, I got to be in this leadership role. I see all the kings and the emperor as someone in leadership. OK, and that they stay in this in this um, energy of I'm in charge, I need to be in charge of and be responsible of the thoughts that I'm producing and how I implement it and put it out into the world. So with the Page of Wands and the King of Swords, I feel like this, there's this excitement of this new thing. It's like, oh my gosh. But then the King of Swords is like, oh, I got to control my thoughts. I got to control myself. I can't like let, you know, the, let it get, you know like fly away with these thoughts and, and, and stuff. I don't know. I just, I felt like the King of Swords is really struggling to stay grounded. And it's funny because the King of Swords is air, which is like the air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, where uh, the page of, uh, the page of wands is Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo. And so these signs are all like all about the fire, all about the passion. It's like, oh, and you're going away with it. And then the King of Swords is like, oh, my God, I got to stay like, you know, in my mental. I got to stay in my head. I got to remember what I can like stay focused on and not let lower vibrations or like the I don't know why I want to say lower chakras, like the the root chakra, the the sacral chakra and so forth, like kind of take over. Because with the air, um, the king of swords are the higher chakras, whether it be the throat chakra, um, not the heart. No, no. Sorry. I'm just like thinking in my head, like, eh. uh, but yes, yeah, anyway, so there's this conflict I feel. So right now, fam, what I'm picking up for the collective is that there's a decision that needs to be made. A lot of heavy burdens that need to be released and, uh, in getting ready to enter a new chapter and it's interesting because we're almost at the end of the year so that's like right around the corner so that could be something that you guys are working toward so yeah um and that excuse me is that i don't know i was a little bit all over the place but if you listen through uh to this audio thanks because um it was actually nice to record something i i feel like Sometimes I, I do this just because I actually, I'm the one that needs to do this. 
<laughs> and I just want to share with you guys because there can be some useful information for you guys too in the in the reading. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope that another I'll have another collective reading for you guys, a video uh, with collective messages and so forth. I honestly don't know what else I'm going to do with my channel at this point. I just want to produce content whenever I feel like it and um, express myself because right now I'm just going through it and I just want to have a bit of um, escape from the heavy burdens of other things. So I'm trying to stay lighthearted and do things that I enjoy and they're kind of stress-free. Recording this doesn't, it's nice because I just get to talk. <laughs> so thank you for listening if you did. Sending feel-good vibes your way and on to the next one. Take care, fam. Bye.